Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about a topic that is dear and dear to my heart, that is volunteering. What is a hundred hours? For nerdy mathematicians like me, I can refer to 6,000 minutes or 360,000 seconds. But for the past 15 years, it represents the number of average hours that I spend on volunteering per year. And today I want to talk about the benefits of volunteering, how the experience have helped me grow emotionally, personally, and professionally, why I do it, and why you should do it too, and how to get started. My name is V. I am an actuary, a risk manager, a lifelong learner, and an active volunteer. My channel mission is to help you study smarter, work better, and live happier. For weekly educational video, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification on. First off, what is volunteering? Volunteering is providing a service willingly and without pay. For example, you can volunteer for a charitable or non-profit organization, or you can volunteer as a soccer coach at your school. According to a survey in Canada about participating and volunteering in 2010, 47% of the Canadians or 13 million people volunteer contributed to a 2.1 billion hours and that is equivalent to a 1.1 million full-time job. That's how impressive, isn't it? And volunteering is not just about giving back. Today, I will give you a 10 reason on the benefits of volunteering. Number one, volunteer help you explore your own community. My first official volunteer assignment is with Moi He San, or you can call it the Green Campaign in Vietnam at the end of grade 10. So I grew up uh, knowing only mostly studying. So that was really the first time that I ventured out and tried different activities. So together with other volunteers, we help organize uh, events and games and activities for the little kids. And then we also help doing errands for the elders. So that was really the first time that I feel like I took a good look at the people surrounding me and understanding a little bit about a community where I was growing up. I spoke to the veteran who shared their memories about the Vietnam War. I spent time with older brothers and sisters who shared their experience about working uh, as an adult. It was a very memorable experience and a fond memory up until now. There was a lot of things that I learned and I realized that my country is still poor and there's a lot of things that we can do to help. So to my Vietnamese friends, and especially my school juniors, if you have the opportunity, please volunteer for the Mohe San campaign. You will not regret it. Number two, volunteering can help new students studying abroad or newcomers to be immersed into the new culture. I first came to Canada 15 years ago as an exchange student. I arrived in Prince Edward Island in a small city called Montague. Let me tell you, like the city only had 3,000 people. It was even smaller than the number of students that my high school in Vietnam. So basically everything was different from the culture, the food, uh, the environment and so on. But I was telling myself, I came here as an exchange student and so I should try many different things as much as possible. And I did, I volunteered for various organizations. So as a junior guide for the girl guys, I joined the little kids to do outdoor activities, including camping, uh, campfires, and try on the marshmallow. I really learned to how to do step dancing like an islander. So I went, um, and then I even went lobster fishing, apple pickings, and learned about the PI heritage. So at the end of school year, I felt like I was being a part of the new community. If I was to stay at home, or just waiting for people to come to talk to me, I don't think I learned and experienced as much as I did. So if you ever get a chance to go abroad somewhere else, even for your work assignments or for your study, try and go out and do volunteering. You never know what life can lead you and what experience you can get with this. Number three, picking up new hobbies. So volunteering is also about trying new things. You can volunteer for different organizations and try out different things. And at the end of the day, you may realize what you don't like to do. Or you can find something that truly passionate, passionate about. So through volunteering, I have tried various activities, including dancing and being a dance instructor. I love it. Singing, uh, not so good. And acting. I 
suck at it. Originally, I was given a human role, but I was so bad at it that I was demoted to just playing a fish. How sad is it? So by trying new things, you can discover new hobbies or hidden talent. If you've been interested in acting, why not volunteering for a community teacher? If you enjoy working with the children, uh, you can try volunteering for the youth organizations. Uh, how about handiwork? The Habitat for Humanities will help you to learn how to do various construction work and build a house. The possibilities are endless. Number four, help you build your skill set and get your first job. In today's competitive market, volunteering can help you to stand out. According to a survey done by Tan Bank, with 200 of the leading businesses in the UK, so 73% of the employers would recruit a candidate with volunteer spirit with that over one with that. 94% of the employer agree that volunteering can help add to skills. And 94% of the volunteers uh, who volunteer because they want to learn new skills agree that they have benefited over it by improving their salaries or getting promoted or getting their first job. And I know this is true for myself. Before I even got my first co-op job, uh, I volunteered as a treasurer for my university and that's how I picked up accounting and bookkeeping skills. And then I volunteered as a coordinator for international student service where I recruited my own executive team. I coordinated all the volunteers and organized trips and events and that's how I can develop my leadership and interpersonal skills. I talk about that during my interviews with potential employers and could provide them with real example about my potential, my skill sets, my dedication and commitment. And that's how I landed my first co-op job and here I am almost 10 years into my full-time career. So for you out there who are looking for your first good job, try going out and doing volunteering. If this is also a great way for you to learn about different career possibilities. If you want to become a nurse or a doctor, you can try volunteering in the hospital. If you want to become a counselor, maybe you can try to volunteer at the youth organization. And five, help you advance your career. Do you want a raise? Well, on an average, according to a study done by Day and Deflon, Volunteers earn 7% more than people who do not volunteer after accounting for other factors. So if you belong to a profession organization such as CFA, CPA, or engineers, you can try to volunteer for your organization. So for myself, I volunteer for actuarial organization, include Society of Actuaries, the Canadian Institute of Actuaries, where I was able to get to network with other actuaries and then keep up with industrial training and knowledge that benefit for me at work. And perhaps the biggest potential is the opportunity to lead. So according to a Deloitte survey, 93% of the workers believe that volunteering gave them a chance to improve their leadership skills. So for myself, for five years, I was leading the ERM Continuing Education Subcommittee. And now I am sitting on the board of the Actual Foundations of Canada, as well as being a member on the Joint Risk Management Sections. So being a secret, executive secretary for the AFC allowed me to see things from the perspective of a board on a high level with a vision and mission in mind. I was also able to observe other experienced members, how to act, and learn things along the way. For me, it is a valuable experience. Number six, hope you make great connections and great friends. Volunteer work is a great way to make connections with like-minded people working on a variety of occupations and industry. So in the Deloitte surveys, 87% of the respondents say that volunteering allowed them to build a great network of the professional contacts. So for myself, I have now many, many, many awesome actuaries who I got a chance to volunteer with, uh, with. and also to build a good network of contacts uh, that also help me at my job. So it doesn't matter what organization you choose to volunteer with. In the end, it is an opportunity to build long-lasting professional uh, relationships. And importantly, you can also make great friends out of this. So for me, one of my best friends was coming from doing volunteer together for one year. And not just friends. So if you are still single out there, 
Maybe you will meet your significant partner through volunteering together. After all, you are great, uh, well like minded people supporting the same cause, and you know he or she also has a good heart. So, isn't that a win win situation? Just keeping an eye out. Seven, volunteering is fun. At the end of the day, no matter what you do, you want to try to have fun. And volunteering is also simply about having fun and enjoying the moments. So during my time of volunteering at the Good Guys, uh, I was able to having fun play, uh, going campings or doing bon campfire. And, and then when I organized trips for international students, I was able to visit Niagara Falls or Niagara on the Lake and I tried going canoeing and even snow tubing. I made great friends who also I shared the moments with. So at the end of the day, you want to enjoy your activities and you will be able to work better, study better uh, because of that. And a happier you means a happier people around you and also a happier, larger community. Good for your body. It has been proven by several studies that volunteering can help with your health. Many volunteer activities involve physical exercises, such as running or walking to fundraise, and then planting trees, and coaching at your kid's soccer team. So a study done in Canada also showed that uh, losing weight can also be a positive effect of, of volunteering, especially for young people. So for myself, I'm not that athletic. I actually don't exercise much. But at one point, I was volunteering as a coach for swimming for people with uh, disabilities. And because of that, uh, I forced myself to at least like, go swimming for at least once per week. So that was definitely a benefit for myself. And this is also good for your mind. Volunteering can help people find loneliness, depressions, and anger according to Harvard Health. It is known to help you reduce stress and can give you a motiva motivation in life. So for a lot of us, helping others is a part of who we are. There was actually an article in New York Times in 2009 showing that people is actually born with a sense of compassion and an urge to help others. So Maslow hierarchy of needs also has a stage for self-actualization and that includes being socially compassionate and possessing a sense of humanity. So when we volunteer with Habitat for Humanity, uh, we basically helping other families to have affordable housing. We can see that the house being built and we see the progress is being made. When we volunteer with the food bank, at the end of each shift, we collected enough food to help feeding a family of four for a week. And when we volunteer for Canadian Cancer Society, we help fundraising to contribute to the fight of cancer and that can help saving some, somebody's life. So it would give us a sense of accomplishment. Number 10, giving back to the community. Most importantly, you should volunteer because you want to make a difference in someone's life. 93% according to the 2010 Canada survey says that they are motivated by the desire to contribute to the community. The greatest benefactor of this volunteering is the people like you and me, the community around us. When we are volunteering for a cause that we hold dear and near to our heart, we are showing that we care. Just look at what's happening with uh, COVID-19 at this point. Many people are volunteer and helping out during this difficult time, whether fighting in the front line or helping out at the back to control the spread. Each of us, each of us can contribute uh, small portions. And imagine a thousand, a million, a billion people helping each other. Wouldn't the world will be much a better place? In Vietnam, we have the saying, một cây làm chẳng nên non, ba cây chụm lại lên hòn núi cao. Uh, we translate like, if you only have one tree, Maybe you cannot make a forest, but you have multiple trees being together, you will make a forest. So everyone can help making the difference. And you may ask, if you're already working full time or studying for exam or taking care of your kid at home, how can you have the time to volunteer? Actually, according to a BBM uh, survey, Canadians spend an average of 30 hours per week on watching TV. That's a lot. So if you just spend those time on volunteering, you can accomplish 100 hours of volunteering in less than four weeks. And getting started is easy. You can volunteer anywhere, anytime, any place. All you need to ask 
is simply asking, is there anything that you can do? And with today's technology, it can start simply with just a click away. I, can, I will share a lot of different links on various organizations that you can consider to volunteer in the comments. And if you know some good organizations or good cause that you want to promote, feel free to share in the comments as well. If you haven't already uh, started volunteer, get started today. And if you already volunteer, consider doing some more. One say there is no I in team, but there is a you in the word volunteer. Yes, you are the one that can make things happen. Start with just 10 hours and then 50 hours and 100 hours. And then not just one year, but 10 years, 20 years. I will continue to do it and you can do it too. So I hope you feel motivated about volunteering after this video and share with me about your volunteering experience. And for more videos like this on how to study smarter, work better and live happier, more meaningfully, please subscribe to my channel for weekly uh, educational videos. What will your 100 hours look like? Let me know in the comments and I will see you next week. Bye!